Oh, so you want to look good when you play Paladins, huh? That's right, you want to style on some people, pick the best flank possible so you can have the best chance of winning and show off to all your gaming friends. Well, even if that's the case, I'm going to give you the good information so you know exactly who the top five best flanks are. I'm going to break down for you guys exactly why each champion is placed where they are, what their weaknesses are, and what their strengths are that keep them in that spot. But before we get there, this video wouldn't be possible without our sponsors for today, TV Time. One of the best things about TV is being able to see how other people who you're watching those shows with react to the episodes, the funny moments, the sad moments, the crazy twist at the end. But what if nobody's around? That's where TV Time changes the game, y'all. They allow you to connect real time to other people and their reactions about how they're feeling about your favorite shows. You won't get spoiled because you won't be able to see the reactions until you've said that you've watched the show. And they also give you valuable information to make you look like a know-it-all in a good way. One of my favorite anime, Seven Deadly Sins, starts a new season in 70 days. How do I know that? Because the TV Time app told me. It told me the start date of the Stranger Things season two as well. And I was telling that to all my friends. They're like, dang, Ray Day, how you know so much? So here's what we're going to do. You guys go ahead and follow the link in the description below. Follow my profile. You're going to have a chance to not only have a great free app from TV Time, but you're also going to be able to win some crystals. I'll be picking three more winners to win 400 crystals each for when they follow me on my profile. So make sure to do that by the end of this week. And I'll be picking some winners next weekend. So free crystals, free app, great value. Go ahead and download this. It's a no brainer. Check out TV Time today. Link is in the description below. Moving into the number five best flank in Paladins. It's Sky. Honestly, the number five spot was the hardest for me to determine out of any other spot in the flank competitive tier list because of the fact that there's so many flanks who are situational, who have opportunities to be successful, but in different ways. I think Sky may be one of the more situational flanks, but she gets the number five spot because not only has she been played by a variety of pros, she has a variety of legendary options as well, which I think creates more of a healthy selection opportunity than when some flank has a guaranteed legendary that has to be chosen and otherwise they're not viable. But Rain Day Sky sucks, she's a meme. Uh, not so true. We've seen some of the best players in the world like Lazy go ahead and experiment with her, albeit not having much success, at least recognizing the potential threat she could have with legendary cards like Surprise Attack, giving 500 bonus damage off your first shot out of Hidden, which is 25% of a damage or a flank's health pool usually, maybe even more. And also debilitate, being super effective to counter tanks specifically when the enemy team likes to stack them. Although Sky doesn't have vertical mobility, it's true. She's been getting Getting a lot better over the course of time and I think this is paying off and allowing her to be a viable niche pick on specific maps for specific teams. Some players are just going to like stealth champions more than any other, and that's going to be the way it is. Stealth has always been something you love or you hate, usually. It's kind of hard to have an in-between. Sky's weapon has been getting better with more accuracy changes, allowing her poison bolts to be more concise and do more damage more abruptly so you have that burst aspect to them, and also just having her time bomb be throwable, giving her a whole level of flexibility that she didn't have before uh, when she had to personally put herself in harm's way to go ahead and engage in the fight. Now, though Sky isn't quite near the top four in this list, I think she does hold her own here as number five in the top five best flanks in Paladins. You guys let me know what you think in the comment section below. Moving on to the number four best flank in Paladins, it's Maeve. <clears throat> Maeve. Maeve. Honestly, Maeve is a very annoying champion for me, but that's because she's good. We all know that Maeve can be really frustrating because she's so airborne, she has that vertical mobility, and she's just got that pace to outrun almost anyone on the battlefield, and that's what makes her very strong. But sometimes having that mobility isn't enough, and when she got her weapon changes coming through a few patches ago, that's what really pushed her over the edge. Most people didn't realize, but Maeve was getting small buffs here and there to her cards before these huge changes happened, and I think the conjunction of both of them at the same time made her a monster. She was a first pick, she was a first ban, and now as she's gotten a recent nerf back from 450 to 420 on those daggers, she's stabilized a little bit. Although that doesn't take away the value that she brings to a team composition. Midnight is completely valuable dispersal. It forces an enemy team to stop what they're doing and oftentimes displaces a team from each other. When in competitive esports, cohesion is one of the most important things you're bringing to the table. Maeve's counterattack potential and also her initiation potential with her mobility and the use of Midnight is simply excellent, and that allows her to be a great contribution from a team fight perspective, even if she can't be in the thick of things. And though Maeve has these great utility options, things didn't change for her until her weapons got buffed. Once those did, she became a top pick, and she currently is still very, very good because of the fact that everyone had to play her during that time. She was very, very strong. Now they've got her in their arsenal. She's a character that's comfortable for a lot more players now, and honestly, I think she takes the number four spot with E. She could probably go higher for a lot of people, but I have a few other champions that I think can control the pace of a 
the game and absolutely have a lot more upside than Maeve at this point. So that's why I'm leaving her at the number four spot, definitely above Sky, I think in a whole nother league above Sky, uh, but not quite in my top three. Moving on to the number three best flank in Paladins, it's... Eevee. Eevee is one of the best champions to snowball a fight, and that is a great thing to have for a flank. If she ever gets going, although it may be hard and it may take more experience to find those perfect moments when you start a fight every single time you play her, once she does get a kill, it is hard to stop her from getting two, three, or four. Having not one, but two mobility skills and complete invulnerability when you go into your ice block means that good Eevee players just don't have to die, and that's always going to scale extremely well with high level pros. And really with any person who has played Paladins for a long time, we see a huge difference in a beginner EV versus a high level EV. And one of the things is that mobility, as Garrett Hires Martini, the lead designer of this game, loves to say, mobility is the highest scaling attribute that pairs with skill. The more skill you have, the more mobility becomes more desired and more valuable and more separating in terms of how effective that pro player can be versus that beginner who's probably not going to use that blink very successfully and is just going to be more focused on hitting their shots. EV also has three extremely viable legendaries, in my opinion. And I think this helps a champion to step up in the ranks of this list. Having options for different team compositions means that you could be picked up for more and more situations. And that's what I love about champions in general in this game. But I think Eevee does it better than Maeve and Sky at this point. And she's one of my favorite champions in all of Paladins. Her weapon can be valuable from long range and short range with the increased projectile speed that happened quite a few patches ago. And I think she's just, again, one of the best champions to take over a match with. So she's going to get the number three spot here. It's time to see who gets the top two as we head into the second best flank in Paladins. It is... Buck. Buck will buck you up if you do not watch out. This guy is a monster in Paladins. He's a great flank. And with the new buffs that came through in OB61, he has turned a new leaf in terms of viability. He's essentially gotten a reworked shotgun, which has so much burst that if hit correctly with his net shot, can two shot other champions like Maeve. It's 1800 straight damage. And that's not including the bounce house additional 600 that comes with this standard legendary pick. A lot of people are considering Buck a one trick, but honestly, Honestly, we've seen this pattern before and I'm pointing it out again. A new weapon change, a better weapon, and a guy gets more and more valuable. A champion becomes more and more prevalent in the higher level scene and that is what you will see in first person games. You're going to see the weapons really dictate the viability of a certain champion and that is what we're seeing with Buck here. I think his recovery got a lot better and I think the legendary bulk up actually is pretty good, making his heal from 1000 to 1600 and giving him an extra 300 max health for 5 seconds after using it. With Reconstruction 4, you could take 4 seconds off of a 10 second cooldown so basically every six seconds you could pop something that lasts for five seconds that gives you 300 extra health max and a 1600 health heal yikes the thing about buck is that you cannot ignore him if he gets into the back line you have to deal with him otherwise he's most likely going to win his 1v1 and i think that's where buck brings the most value i don't know many champions that can go toe to toe with buck in a 1v1 due to his insane damage burst his insane mobility and also his insane self-healing he's just got a kit that's very hard to balance and find the sweet spot on with the addition of his ultimate getting better, the rework to his new weapon, and of course Buck's inherent tankiness, utility, and mobility, he's going to have to go up as my number two flank in the top five best flanks in Paladins. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, I'm sure you've guessed who this is by now. Is it Lex? Is, is it Talus? No, you guys know who it is. The number one best flank in Paladins. It's your boy, Androxus. Can nobody break down the God Slayer, baby? And that's the way it should be. He has been the man with the plan since the beginning of closed beta uh, of Alpha. Androxus was just designed to be that Miggity Mac that you want to buy, the, the one you want to play, the one that's in the highlight reel, in the cinematic, stealing the show, and that's just what he's always done. I feel like every good pro player has a great Androxus, and that's just the way it is. If you're an experienced player, if you've been playing Palance for a while, you know how to play Andro, and that's why I think he's just so valuable when these new changes come through to his weapon, making it semi-automatic as you guys have seen. The ability for him to increase his DPS, to hit that 580 shot every 0.36 seconds, and just take down tanks, the additional 30% damage to just finish off kills from Darkstalker, and the fact that Godslayer was already valuable puts Androxus in great shape to control the meta and pacing of a game. Not only is he mobile like Buck and Eevee, not only is he survivable with his reversal like Buck and Eevee as well, not only is he deadly and can take over a game and snowball fights to get 3, 
four or five kills if you don't pay attention to him. But his ultimate turns the tide of a fight more often than not. I think the Accursed Arm, albeit very dangerous to use when people are expecting it, is much more impactful than Buck's ultimate and Eevee's Ice Storm. I just don't think that those two can compare to the Accursed Arm. It's an iconic skill for a reason. Everyone expects the dashes, but it's just so hard to counter because he just bursts you for 4,000 if he's playing well. So not only is his kit comparable and probably better than any of the other flanks, his new weapon changes have certainly pushed him into a new echelon of great. Androxes, I don't think has ever been this good, and honestly, he takes the top spot in my opinion, and it's not really very close. Honestly, if you want to look cool, if you want to impress, if you want to have a high-level champion that most likely will always be valuable and be able to snowball a game no matter what balance change comes through in the game, then Androxus takes the cake as the best flank in Paladins. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. I want to know your thoughts about what you think the best flanks are in Paladins, so comment your list down below or any adjustments you'd make to mine or things you really don't agree with. If you really agree, let me know about that as well, and make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you stay tuned for more Rain Day Gaming videos. Also, support the sponsor and earn those free 400 crystals by downloading TV Time today. That link's in the description below. Thanks a lot to those sponsors for showing up and helping the channel out. As always, my friends, remember to never give up, never stop gaming, and we'll see you all next time.